Welcome to the Vale and Downland Museum. This short film tells the history of Wantage and the Vale of the White Horse. Wantage is a busy market town and people have been trading here for over 2,000 years. Many generations have lived and died in the town and their struggles and aspirations have made the town what it is today. The White Horse, from which the area takes its name, has witnessed newcomers from earliest times to the present scientific and technological age. Journeying through time, we will see how events that shaped a nation have left their imprint on the land and on the lives and memories of local people. Our ancestors were already here 350,000 years ago. Bands of hunters and gatherers left behind their weapons and stone tools in the Thames gravel, alongside the remains of their prey. At the end of the last ice age, the environment changed. The high chalk of southern England offered these early hunters and gatherers a route through the now densely forested landscape. The oldest, the Ridgeway, passing above Wantage, provided opportunities for trade and was later to link important centres of settlement and ritual. 6,000 years ago, people began to adopt a more settled agricultural lifestyle. The domestication of plants, animals and the use of new tools led to much of the downland landscape being cleared for pasture and cultivation. Some of the most important members of this new society were buried under long barrows used as communal tombs, such as here at Wayland Smithy, beside the Ridgeway. Evidence of the first use of metals in the British Isles has been discovered in local round barrows. Decorated drinking vessels were found at Radley with gold and copper jewellery, as well as bronze weapons. This hoard testifies to the craftsmanship of the Bronze Age metalsmith. Agriculture became more intensified and the shapes of ancient fields can still be seen on the downs. From about 1200 BC, the native population increased, which led to competition for land. Hill forts, such as here at Uffington, are visible reminders of warfare between rival communities. By the late Iron Age, the Vale was a tribal frontier and a gateway for trade and contact with the Roman world. With the Roman conquest, the local population adopted aspects of a new way of life. Villas were built in the Vale, sometimes replacing an existing native farmstead, as at nearby Challow and Barton Court, Abingdon. A local market settlement grew up at Wantage, alongside the intersection of an ancient trackway and a Roman road. The collapse of Roman rule in the 5th century saw new arrivals from the North Sea coast of Europe. Evidence for these people, now known as the Anglo-Saxons, comes from the excavation of sites at Watchfield, West Hendred and Lowbury. The Saxon king Alfred the Great is recorded as being born in Wantage in AD 849. A gifted king and commander, he briefly halted the Viking advance at the Battle of Ashdown consolidated the Kingdom of Wessex and laid the foundations for the early English state. By the late Anglo-Saxon period, much of the Vale was divided into manorial estates and can still be seen today in our modern parish and county boundaries. By the time of the Norman conquest, the Vale had become one of the most populous and prosperous parts of the Kingdom. The Doomsday Survey in 1086 records that the king held wantage and that it was worth 61 pounds. After the king, the largest landholder was the church. The 13th century monastic barn at Great Coxwell is evidence of the productiveness of the Vale. The need for local markets to sell surplus produce grew and market rights were granted to wantage in the 13th century. The market stalls and shops became permanent fixtures, 
leaving a town plan which has changed little since medieval times. The remains of the early market cross of 1580, a casualty of the Civil War, can be seen in the museum today. By the mid-1700s, the appearance of the marketplace changed with the removal of the butcher's stalls. The facades of the timber-framed buildings were gradually replaced with brick. Above Wantage, the chalk downs were ideal for breeding sheep, and the wealth of local villages stems from the textile trade. A stone fleece adorns the grave of a farmer at Letcombe Bassett as a sign of respect for the source of his wealth. The entrance to the Wantage Stiles almshouses is paved with sheep's knuckle bones, and public houses recall the importance of the wool trade. By the end of the 1700s, the effects of the Industrial Revolution were being felt locally. Trades in wantage, such as leather and sackcloth making, began to develop on an industrial scale. The tan yard of William Ansell and Paul Sylvester was described as the largest in the kingdom. The improved transportation provided by the Wilts and Barks Canal from 1810 opened up the veil to outside influences. Cheap coal fueled new industries such as agricultural engineering and increased commercial opportunities for milling, malting and brewing. Progress was not without a social cost. The influx of navvies to dig the canal swelled the local population in Montage. A series of bad harvests across the country and bankruptcies in traditional businesses resulted in deteriorating living conditions and lawlessness. Early local historians refer to this time as black wantage. Concerned citizens approached local solicitor William Ormond and this resulted in the 1828 Act for improving policing, lighting and paving of the town of Wantage. The social and spiritual welfare of the townspeople was taken up in the 1840s by the Reverend William Butler. He believed in the value of education for all classes and started a number of new schools. He founded the convent of St Mary the Virgin, extended the parish church and commissioned buildings in the Gothic Revival style. The pace of change gathered momentum with the opening of the Great Western Railway, connecting London with Bristol. This transformed the pattern of trade, both here and abroad. The foundry in Wantage and Norder and Norder of Chano could now export their award-winning portable threshing machines all over the world. These firms provided houses for their employees, as here at Nordertown. The town was linked to the railway station in 1874 with the construction of Britain's first steam-powered tramway. Its first chairman, Lord Wantage, was the largest landowner in Berkshire. He had a strong sense of public duty that permeated all his activities. At Lockinge, he and his wife Harriet created a model estate of progressive farming and social welfare that attracted a great deal of national attention. He presented the town with both the well-known King Alfred statue and a collection of paintings in the Victoria Cross Gallery. Enterprise, mobility and change characterised the first decades of the 20th century. The area felt the impact of increased mechanisation on the land, the arrival of the motor car and the conflict of two world wars. In both wars, many people gave their lives, and the area played an active role in World War II. At Grove Airfield, a big influx of American GIs brought a different culture. The airfield was finally used for housing from the 1960s. A post-war technological revolution brought the Atomic Energy Research Establishment to Harwell Airfield in 1946 attracting new arrivals with scientific expertise, giving employment for local people and trade for the town. It was the beginning of the end for the nearby agricultural village of Charlton 
as the housing estates grew. Our way of life has changed, but Wantage continues to evolve alongside new developments in industry, transport and communication. Changing, yet unchanging in its appearance, Wantage links the past with the present. <laughs>